Welcome to our last section in our series on nutrition in the childhood years and the older years. This section is going to be focusing on teenagers and seniors. We're going to start with teenagers and Teenagers are unique in that they are making a transition from being fed by their parents or by the school to actually making their own meals, making their own choices, buying their own food in case earning their own money. And this allows them a little bit more freedom and they're usually trying to um, express themselves through this process. So in that they tend to consume, you know, too much fast food, easy foods. They don't really know how to cook yet. Processed foods, which usually contain solid fats and added sugars, and soda. Too little iron and calcium, which are the two most important nutrients for teenagers. Now, during, the, during these years, iron is really important, especially for the teenage girl, because she's starting to menstruate. So, with that loss of blood, there is going to be loss of iron. So she will need to take in more iron to compensate for that loss, much more iron than a male would need at the same age. Calcium is very important for both um, boys and girls during the teenage years. Remember, we talked about peak bone mass developing by 18 years of age. Most of this Bone mineral, calcium and phosphate, is going to accrue within the bone to give it strength during these teenage years. After 18 years of age, only a little bit more of bone can accrue up to age 30, and then it's pretty much all downhill. So it's very important in these formative years to obtain enough calcium, to have enough exercise, to reach peak bone mass. Now remember other things that might limit the um, accrual of calcium or phosphate in leading to peak bone mass could be, you know, one, a lack of exercise, uh, potentially too much sodium intake. Um, also, soda may interfere. It might be because of a displacement of milk, so a loss of calcium. But again, these two um, minerals are extremely important to teenagers. As far as calories, there um, is no one calorie definition for a teenager because bro growth spurts happen at different times and based on both the growth spurt, the body, both the height and the weight, as well as the physical activity, there's going to be a dramatic difference in calorie needs for teenagers. It could be as little as 1,400 a day or as much as 3,400 a day or even more. Now this is a data from the CDC and I just want to point out that it, it shows just one beverage per day, like students who drank one beverage per day and they looked at water, milk, fruit juice, soda pop, sports drinks. Also there are actually about four other drinks um, that I didn't include because you wouldn't be able to see the data, but they uh, mostly were sugar sweetened type drinks. And what they found is that, you know, at least Students were drinking at least one glass of water a day. That's great. You need a lot more. Remember, we try to shoot for the eight glasses a day or at least um, some sort of fluids or fluid-filled uh, whole foods like uh, fruits or vegetables. And 40% had milk. This is also good. But then we start to get to the juice, about 30%. Remember, 100% juice can give a lot of calories um, and a lot of sugar without any fiber. So it's always best to get it from whole food sources. And then soda pop, about a quarter of teenagers had at least one soda pop a day and some sports drinks. Now, what's a little bit more, um, i say, concerning is that when they looked at all of the sugar-sweetened beverages and asked if students had at least one of any of the sugar-sweetened beverages, is up to about 62%. Now, I remember when I talked about the amount of sugar that is needed per day, we think of six to nine teaspoons is the general recommendation once you get into the later teenage and adult years. 
So 24, at a minimum, that's 24 grams. I like to think of it as 24 to 35 grams of sugar per day as the upper limit for added sugar. One soda, 12 ounce soda is going to be about 40 grams of sugar. So one soda is too much sugar for even the upper limit for a teenager per day. And it's important because also you can get a lot of sugar from um, a lot of the sports drinks and the vitamin waters, which be very uh, iced tea. So very careful with all of those other drinks as well. All right, so we'll finish up with seniors. And I'm just going to talk a few important points about seniors. And what I want to start with is to think about as people age, all the different impact that aging has on eating. Think about losing your teeth and trying to chew a steak or chicken or beef jerky. <laughs> so, or maybe even munch on a really firm vegetable. So how foods are served, their texture, how soft they are is going to make a difference. The whole intestinal tract will start to deteriorate just like everything else. So the absorptive capacity of many nutrients can be affected. So this is something to think about. A lot of people will develop arthritis in their later years. So think about your hands and trying to grab a knife and cut. You lose your coordination and your eyesight, your ability to grip. So that um, minimizes independence with cooking food or how food can be cooked. So there are a lot of factors that can impact this. But in general, there's a decrease in calorie needs, and it's about 5% per decade. I want to point out that some of this loss can be mitigated if muscle mass is maintained, and that's generally through strength training exercises. But that's the general loss, about 5% per decade. Now, protein recommendations, they stay the same. Um, fiber does need to be adequate, and it's important to hydrate with fiber, but seniors can run into problems with constipation. Two things that can help with constipation are fiber and water. So fluids. Fat is recommended to follow the AHA, so that's American Heart Association diet recommendations, which is less than 7% of saturated fat per day. Now vitamin A is interesting. This is the only vitamin that actually increase, increases absorption. Absorption is increased with age. So the recommendation for intake actually decreases. So you don't need as much. Vitamin D, the recommendation will increase. And for a lot of the other reasons we had talked about is that seniors tend to stay inside more. They're not as active, they're not as mobile. They tend to cover up their wrinkles. So they tend to wear long sleeves, long pants, tend to not show much skin. So there's more time indoors, there's more skin covered, and their skin loses the ability to synthesize vitamin D from the cholesterol that's actually in the skin when the UV light hits it. So the body actually loses the ability to, for this process, or at least it's diminished. So there are a number of reasons why the recommendation increases, and that's in um, over the age of 70 years. We talked about water, adequate hydration is important. Iron. Iron is interesting. The recommendation actually decreases. So seniors don't need as much iron because iron status actually improves. Now calcium is going to increase. We think of, what do we think about? We think about osteoporosis in the seniors, right? Remember, you can never catch up. You can never get, you know, reach your peak bone mass again after the age of 30. That's the maximum point you'll have in your entire life. But you can help with the diminishing, you know, the decreases or the declines in bone mineral density. And so you can slow those declines. I love this picture of these, these two skating. So physical activity is really important um, for a number of reasons. It increases the calorie needs. So the more activity you do, the more you need calories. The more calories you take in, the better chance that a senior is going to have of obtaining all the necessary nutrients. 
Also, physical activity is going to be associated with less muscle loss. And this is actually more with strength training than aerobic exercise. But if there's more muscle mass, there's going to be um, more independence. So this is going, the loss of independence in um, seniors is a major problem. So this is actually very important. So activity is very crucial for the senior years. I'm just going to do a quick mention of Alzheimer's. Um, one in eight uh, individuals over the age 65 are diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. That is actually considerable. Alzheimer's is, um, in general, a loss of memory. There's poor judgment. There's impaired problem solving. And sometimes even incoherent speech, just because all the thought processes aren't really linked together. Right now, as we reach 85 years of age, half of all people over age 50, um, 85 will have Alzheimer's disease. What's a little bit scary is that this is expected to increase by 300% in the next three decades. So what might be causing Alzheimer's? There's a lot of research right now about the cause. There are a lot of new treatments, new drugs. Um, a lot of uh, research indicating that it might be diet. There is some link. It's not, uh, hasn't been established as being a causal relationship yet. But there's some link that some of the heavy metals, this could be aluminum in some of the pans that you cook in, it could be iron, zinc, or copper, that they actually, when they're taken in in the later years, may actually um, impair memory. So there's this link now. Again, it's not a ca causal relationship yet. Um, sugar. Sugar has also been uh, thought to potentially uh, be problematic and uh, cause some memory impairment and perhaps lead to Alzheimer's as well. I think what we're going to see is more research on this, especially as the prevalence of Alzheimer's uh, increases over the next few years. But we all know that as long as you optimize your diet, you're going to have stay away from the processed foods, increase whole food sources, um, and take some basic steps with daily physical activity that there is a greater likelihood of um, not developing chronic diseases and Alzheimer's is one of them. So this is going to be in the end of our section on nutrition in the early and middle childhood years, the teenage years, and in the older adults.